So Jeff, I know you're a little short on time, uh, so we'll take it as long as we can, uh, but this is your section. And then after this, you guys can both fall off. I know we're running a little long. Great. Yeah, and I'll, I'll move pretty quickly. So just wanted to circle back on this idea of AI for image recognition, because I in one of our last um, presentations, and you can go to the next slide, Dan, we talked about how seven years ago, this was a joke, a machine that could understand quickly what an image was about. It required a bunch of researchers. And, and we looked at one of this comic that was kind of poking fun at that idea. And nowadays, it's very easy. We can, Machines can recognize images extremely quickly and, and do so fairly accurately. Uh, yeah, so the, I wanted... the point about this slide is just that there are easy problems and hard problems. And unless you're an expert, you don't always know the difference. And just a few years ago, identifying something in an image was a hard problem, but we've conquered it. Yeah, and I'll just touch on this briefly. And this is a funny image. That's that's a uh, that's a potato, I think. Um, but but how we did this historically is we essentially used math, and as humans, we had to think through attributes of images. So we had to look at an image and understand what are the features. And when I say features, I mean what are the things we need to know about an image? Are there color gradients? Are there uses of certain colors? Are there edges that we can identify? Are there certain patterns? Are there corners? Are there things in this image that would allow us to create these identifiable traits? And then what we used to do is we'd kind of feed all those through logical decision trees. Like, okay, if there's no if there's no circles in the image, it's probably not a wheel. And it's probably something that that has, you know, straight edges. And we'd, we'd try to figure out all of these things by going through these pretty complex logical decision trees. And um, and even we do things like average things together. Like, does the is this the number seven? Well, we look at like 18,000 photos of the number seven and see how close do the numbers that this image represents line up with each other. Um, and it was a very kind of brute force method. And so sometimes it would work really well. Like on the right, you might identify that this was a cat, but that also could be some like mountains and lakes and a and a bridge. And so the machines were not very good. And it put a lot of pressure on the humans to really design how we solve the problem. What are the features and how do we actually think through, you know, understanding an image in terms of what it actually represents. So when we moved into the new world of machine learning, then we just did neural networks and we covered this a bit. We just fed hundreds of thousands of images that were labeled into these neural networks and we let the machine itself dictate its own learning. So we just told it that these were the inputs and these are the outputs that we expect and these machines do something called back propagation in their learning where they essentially take a guess and if it's wrong they go correct all the math and all of these layers of the neural network until they get it right and they do that over and over and over again and that's how these machines are trained um to me what the most interesting thing about this is and we touched on it a bit on the next slide is that that when we did this, these machines worked a lot better. But then when we tried to understand how these machines were working, and we started looking at mathematically what these neural networks were doing, layer by layer, they actually recreated a lot of the things that humans were already doing. So this is an example of what an image classifier is doing layer by layer. And you can see some cool things like it's looking first for colors and image gradients, and then it's looking for patterns, and then it's looking for more complex patterns, and so on and so on. And so to me, what's really cool about this is when we take these neural networks and we start training them, they essentially replicate a lot of our human thinking, but then they go 40 steps further and they get a lot better than what we could do in terms of our actual programming. And it was just really, it's sort of an interesting philosophical thing to think about, which is that these machines not only helped us solve these problems, but they also recreated our thinking and then took it to the nth level.